secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really starting to get annoyed with your program. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's every kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. As we have told you before, I, uh, I've i got an, a bone to, to pick or an axe to grind with the Today Show. The Today Show, a television program. That is, as they'll tell you, produced by NBC News. But it doesn't contain a whole lot of news. It's essentially news for chicks. And chicks don't care about anything really important. So they brush right past the interviews with world leaders and stuff. Then they get to the important stuff. And their website, todayshow.com, has... All the important information that the ladies need, some of which has already appeared on the Today Show, conveniently written out for them in not very big words. One of the contributors to the Today Show is a woman named Dr. Gail Saltz. Dr. Gail Saltz. And it says here she is a psychiatrist with New York Presbyterian Hospital and a regular contributor to Today. It says here she um, she has a book. It's called Anatomy of a Secret Life, The Psychology of Living a Lie. She's also the author of Amazing You, Getting Smart About Your Private Parts, which helps parents deal with preschoolers' questions about sex and reproduction. Her first book, Becoming Real, Overcoming the Stories We Tell Ourselves That Hold Us Back, was published in 2004. And she answers questions from the audience on the Today Show. And you get an idea of the depth of the average Today Show viewer by hearing the questions that are sent in. You know, that all that time they spend interviewing presidential candidates on the Today Show, interviewing newsmakers... Let's, let's get a look at what kind of individual watches the Today Show. Here's a question from Dr. Gail Saltz. Question. I love my boyfriend and have never been happier. But he has no ambition. He has a 14-inch personality, but you know that's what the case is here. While it's not a problem now because we are young and I am still in college, I'm afraid it will be one day down the line. He has absolutely no dreams other than to live life. But he has so much talent and he takes brilliant pictures. If he had the motivation to apply himself, he could be a great photographer. I feel this is a problem because I have big dreams. And when I am done with school, I am going for them. I want to spend the rest of my life with this man, and I do not want him to settle for anything less than his best or my best, for that matter. How do I help him believe in himself and make him see that there is more to life? <laughs> Who cares about Dr. Gail Saltz's response to that? Let me give you my response, sweetheart. You see, darling, what's really going on with this letter, and if somebody disagrees, I'm sure they'll let me know, this woman got boned the way few women have ever gotten boned in their lives. I mean, this woman, probably for the first time, is having an orgasm every time she has sex. 
And this guy's really good at giving it to her. Because let's face it, the guy has no motivation to do anything else. Staying home, I'll bet smoking weed and boning her is about all he likes to do. And in the beginning, <laughs> there's not a woman out there who doesn't like that concept. You know, when a woman uh, finds a guy who's attractive or who knows how to bone, she rarely begins thinking about any of this stuff until later. This is how it works. You meet a guy who's hot and he's good at boning you. And you think it's kind of romantic that he sits home and daydreams or he has a little Canon camera and he takes brilliant little pictures with it and stuff. But, you know, you come home, he's always waiting for you there. Hi, honey, let's bone. And then they start boning. And it's just a, it's a bone fest. They're just boning and boning and boning. And, uh, you know, eventually what happens one day, it just it happens to guys too, by the way. One day you wake up and the boning has been so good, but you realize, you know what? I can't stand this person, or this person has flaws, or this person is dangerous, or this person uh, is going to uh, drag me into the quicksand. Or You realize something, and then you figure, I've got to do something about this. Now, what guys do is they just generally leave before they get in trouble, unless they've already gotten in trouble. What women do is what this letter writer proposes to do. She wants to change this guy. She wants to change him. He has so much talent. If only he had the motivation to apply himself. I do not want him to settle for anything less than his best, or my best for that matter. This is his best, dear. You can't make him any better. You can't do it. I wonder how many of you out there, men or women, are out there with somebody you love who has absolutely no ambition at all. People who are, you love them. They're pretty. They're handsome. They're hot. They like sex. They're like puppy dogs. They're very good natured. Maybe they smoke weed. and They're just in that wonderful cloud all the time, just, just in a great mood. But uh, after you've had the pipe laid repeatedly, at some point you say to yourself, uh, is this guy ever going to do anything for a living? And maybe you're with somebody like that right now. By the way, there's also plenty of women who have no ambition. Trust me, look around. Most guys don't get worried about a woman not having ambition until they realize they're paying all that broad's bills. And then they start saying things like, why don't you get a job? When there are many women whose goal in life is to get the key to your front door and a copy of your ATM card and your Visa card, and then to go shopping on your dime and to stay home in your house and never actually do anything. So there are female equivalents of this. How many of you, I want to talk to you now, how many of you out there? are with somebody right now who has no ambition and you feel just like the letter writer. Oh, if only I could motivate them. If only I could motivate them. They have so much potential. If if that's you, be honest with me. Call me and tell me all about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. So I read to you from Dr. Gail Saltz of the Today Show about the woman whose boyfriend has no ambition. They've never been happier, but he has no ambition. Uh, Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. So, for the first time, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do agree with you that you cannot motivate the unmotivated. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. What happened? Um, met a guy, a loser, but didn't see it. And so so like, let me ask you, because my theory on this is, 
it's among the best sex you ever had. You're asking if it was? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, of course. Uh, Because, by the way, that's why men put up with a bitch. I hate when you use that word. Ah. Sometimes it fits. I guess so. But not in this situation, because I'm not. But I put up with him. And invested my whole life savings in a business for him, and he slopped it away and sat home and smoked all day long. Oh. And, of course, it ended. Yeah. Now, what made you think you could make a turkey fly? Oh, of course. It's what every other woman thinks, but I'm the one. That your magic vagina can cure anything. Well, my magic ways in general, yeah. But, of course, I'm older and wiser now. Right. I kind of, I don't agree with a lot, but you see, I've been listening to you for the last couple of months on my drive home and kind of for the reason that people look at a train wreck, but I must say that your whole theory on women, I kind of wish I'd had that approach when it came to men because I'd be a whole lot richer now. I was, and I'm not making this up, Carrie, and I'm not just trying to throw it in your face. On Saturday, I took a walk in, I'm going to put it in quotes, my backyard at my new house, a 20-acre property I hear you. in Santa Barbara County. Uh, ever tried to walk 20 acres? Not that I can recall. You know, unless it's been flattened out, made into a parking lot, that is not easy to do. In right. fact, I didn't get through all 20. Right. But I spent the better part of Saturday afternoon walking that property, and I had time to think. And I realized if I had stayed with some of the women I had been with who wanted me to buy them Range Rovers and BMWs, who wanted me to buy them jewelry, who wanted me to take them on vacations to lavish destinations, I wouldn't be standing in my 20-acre uh, uh, spot right now. Had you, did you do any of that stuff? Did No. See, I did, and I learned my lesson, though. I won't do it again, that's for sure. No, I never did. I uh, never paid alimony. I never let a woman talk me into having a child, especially when I was young, though they tried. But is money everything? I've kind of, you know, I've heard people call it an ask. Well, you know, having money is a hell of a lot better than investing in a stoner who uh, uh, smokes your money away, I'll tell you that. Well, that's true, but don't you ever, like, you know, get lonely? No, I've got plenty of friends. By the way, one of the reasons I bought this house is so my friends can come and uh, come and swim in my pool, come and camp out my uh, under the stars in, in, on my property. Makes sense. I'm, why would I be lonely? When you have a nice house, there's plenty of people who want to come over. I've got uh, Now I've got two nice houses. I bet you do. I I think when I think that I've got two houses, I think to myself, there are men out there who have to pay for two residences, a, a, a one-bedroom apartment for themselves and the house they used to live in for the now ex-wife, the bitch. I don't know if you can always call her a bitch, but you are right. It, the whole mess with relationships and kids and what people have to pay for, it is ridiculous. Do you realize I, I have an ex who was not even with me for a year and a half, who wanted me to buy her a condominium on the way out the door? Yeah. Why, I, I, I saved the money and I bought myself a second home. So you didn't have to buy her the condo? I didn't have to do anything. But she thought I should and she stamped her feet and she pouted and she made a big stink. Well, people will do that. And well, they don't yeah, well, have anything themselves. But you see, else. think about it. How You know how many men are out there listening right now who are paying for two residences, but they only can live in one of them? I'm sure there are a lot of women that are doing the same thing. Nah, not know. nearly as many. Not nearly as many, because there are very few women who pay alimony. Well, I would be one of those women. Maybe you would, but you're not in the majority. Okay. I'm with you there. Bye. I mean, it's mathematically impossible. If women make 72 cents for every dollar a man makes, there's a lot of women making less money than men. 
Yeah, but there are a lot of losers. And most out there. most women are not like you. Most women want to be with a guy who makes more money than they do. And, um, you and know that what? means I... that most women receive alimony after a marriage is over. I don't think that's exactly yes, as true as you yes, think it is. Yes, it is. Because in my circle of friends... And... Uh, darling, darling, we're not talking about the six friends you have, okay? We're talking about 350 million people in the United States. <sighs> about uh, my chances are, are chances more than half are women. 52% are women. But, but here's the thing, dear. Of course your friends are like you. That's why they're your friends. Right. But most women are not like that. But if uh, slightly more than half the population are women, and you talk about your standard working force, a l um, large number are women. Working, darling, making darling, money. The, 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 the difference in the population is not in working ages. The, the, what accounts for most of the difference in the population between men and women is the fact that women live longer than men. Okay. So if you're talking about people who are 80 years old, there's a lot more women than men. But when you're talking about people 25 years old, it's about equal. Hmm. So the bottom line here, dear, is that most <laughs> most marriages have a woman who makes less money than the man. Even if the woman makes 150000 a year, I, I, my experience is that most women who make $150,000 a year want to be with a guy who makes more money than they do. I suppose so. You're, you're, you're accepting this kicking and screaming, but you know it's right. No, I mean, there's nothing You wish it wasn't more. true. That's not my point. The point I was trying to make is that most men end up paying alimony. If you were or they end up buying their ex-wife a house. Yeah, but if you were going to select a woman to possibly spend the rest of your life with, wouldn't you select a woman who makes good money? Well, first of all, I'd be smart enough now not to select a woman uh, to uh, to live in my home because it ends up you end up having to pay for it. You would not have the woman that you that you're going to spend the rest of your life with live in your home, darling. I I've been living alone now for years. So if you married somebody, you'd live apart? I, first of all, I wouldn't. I, 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 I am opposed to marriage. I'm opposed to living together. Because women always complain about the way we let we men live. Uh, we drink too much beer. We smoke too much weed. We watch too much sports. We want a flat you screen do. in the living. Well, fine. So you live in your place. And do things your way. You could sip chamomile tea, and you can watch Grey's Anatomy, and you can have little frilly things around the house and pink stuff. And and I will live at my home the way I want to. Where well, everybody's entitled to that, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, the problem is that, that women move in with men and then want us to be like women. Or if not like women, they want us to be like them, whatever they're like. Just like you did. Mm, not, not that I want. No, I don't agree. Darling, with that. you had a complete loser, and you invested money in him, trying to get him to be successful like you. Not necessarily successful like me. I just wanted him. I wasn't trying to make him like me. I just wanted him to not be a loser. Uh, but again, he is a loser. What what women think they can take somebody who's a loser and make him not be a loser. He's got so much potential. <laughs> no, what you've got what you've got is somebody who did a good job laying pipe and you want to take this guy now and make him into a business executive. You're right, and I did, and I'll never do it again. Yeah, that's why I'm shocked that I hear myself talking to Tom Likas and actually saying, you're right. Because you know it's true. You hate it. I know you hate it. I understand. Of course. But it's of true. Course. And you're right. And this is why women love to say I'm a misogynist. They love to hate me. But really, when you sit with me and have a logical conversation like we're having right now, you see what I'm saying is true. It Mu is. Much and as you hate it. 
Well, yeah, but that's, you know, hey. And, and the mistakes. male, by the way, I'm not saying that men are exempt. The male version of this, ever see a guy standing around with a chick who is a complete bitch? Do I ever see a guy standing around with a girl that's a complete yeah, bitch? Yeah, ever seen that? Of course. You know why? Because she can suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. Yeah, but that's the that only reason a man ever wild. puts. That's the only reason men put up with that. Yeah, that's just wrong. <laughs> that's how it is. What you think men should tolerate being with a complete bitch just out of the goodness of their heart because bitches deserve love too? No, but I think eventually it's just they. Move Don't on you to ever the... wonder why a man tolerates that kind of uh, uh, insulting behavior? But they only tolerate it for so long. Well, and then they move on to something with more substance. N n darling, it has nothing to do with substance because some guys are with one bitch after another, just like some women are with one loser after another or one abusive uh, guy after another. After a certain time, though, they learn, you know. I don't agree. I don't. You know what? If everybody learned from their mistakes, there'd be a lot more competition uh, for my gig. I want to tell you right now. I know that what I have that other people don't have is I've had the ability to, after making a mistake, take responsibility for it, learn from it, teach others what I learned. Yeah. Most people are not like that. Well, most that's people an make the, way to be. Most people uh, to spin their wheels. They live their entire lives making the same mistakes over and over and over and blaming everybody else for their own failures. That's true. So, that's maturity. Well, yeah. Yeah, but that's my point. Most so people. When a guy matures, then he'll stop going. No, darling, the... darling, you're not hearing me. Most people do the same things over, and you didn't hear what I said. You're agreeing with something I never said. I'm saying most people, rather than learning from their mistakes the way you claim to have learned, they don't learn from their mistakes. They make the same mistakes over and over and over. And then when they don't learn from their mistakes, they blame others for their failures. That's true. Chances are the guy you gave the money to who blew it up in smoke uh, is with somebody else doing the same thing right now. He is. Well. I know he is. For all right. So you're, you're proving my point. <laughs> well, because maybe. Because most people never evolve. Most people are what you see. What you see, as Flip Wilson once said, what you see is what you get. You know, I didn't believe that before this experience, but after, absolutely. Here I am agreeing with you again. <laughs> Which became WYSIWYG. Remember that? WYSIWYG? Yeah. What I you know see is what you again. get. Right. And that's, it's completely true. Yeah. I, I don't it, understand why people see, you know, a guy who's an Adonis who likes to smoke weed and they get into bed for the best sex they've ever had. They're like, ugh, I'm going to make this guy executive of the year. The guy's just going to lay in pipe. Eventually, eventually, the way things work out is you'll eventually marry Poindexter, who works in the IT department, who has been contributing to his 401K and his IRA every year, and he wears a pocket protector, and you know where he is at dinner time. You'll have beautiful memories of being boned wonderfully by an incredibly hot guy, <laughs> but you and Poindexter will walk hand in hand into the oh, future, God. and that is the truth of life. It is true. It's unbelievable, but that actually is it's very true. You know, there's Poindexters out there right now who can't get a date. We all know these guys. They they have glasses from the 1980s. They shop at Lens Crafters, and uh, they, they, they're they very cheap. Very uh, They save their money, and because they've got no money to spend it on, they've got no dates, they've got no women, they've got no... So they just put their money away, spend accordingly. Save, invest, they're all about numbers. And what happens is, after all those years that you were getting boned by really hot guys, and you've been ignoring these guys, eventually those guys who've been saving money all these years because they haven't been dating you, eventually they're the guys who are going to be your security later on when your attractiveness begins slipping. No, because so I'm in other words, Poindexter will Poindexter will ultimately drive a 1987 BMW. Sure, it's a BMW. It's just an old BMW with a lot of mileage on it. No, but in the end, then Poindexter and somebody like me will win. Because I meant, you know what? I'm not going to say who it is because it's somebody I know and and happen to like. But there is a, 
I wouldn't say an Oscar-winning actress, but there's a famous actress out there. I, I know a few actresses. A name you would know. Somebody I saw who, the last time I saw her, began looking like a little old lady for the first time. But this is somebody who, you know, was very hot in her time. Okay. Okay? In L.A., you meet people like that. And when I saw her, I think she's been married about 74 times. And she's now married to some guy who is... I, I want to say it was like he owned an exterminating company or a plumbing company. Or... How old is she? She's like 60. Okay. And this guy was totally in love because he used to probably had posters of her on the wall or something when he was younger. Mm -hmm. And he had finally snagged this chick, and he was just as happy as if he met her when she was 20 years old. But you know what? When they were 20 years old, she wouldn't have touched this guy with a 10-foot pole. She wouldn't have. Finally, she, know, she finally got her in the end. Well, so. No, no, no. That, uh, darling, stop putting the romantic spin on it. Her <laughs> value finally declined to the point where he could actually get his hands on her. No. Oh, God. of course. You need some happiness, Thomas. Darling, how many big, successful individuals who make lots of money or are famous models or actresses, how many of them date plumbers and exterminators? Seriously. Well, what are they? Re they can't even relate to each other. Why would they? People date people who are similar and have similar interests. You think a plumber and a movie star have similarities? Probably no. not. Well, I, I, you know what? Uh, maybe about important things they do, but you'll never find out until the actress is over the hill. Yeah, but hey, such is life, right? I mean, these two seem very happy. I'm standing out lawns. I have to go in and get my avocados. All Thank right. you, Tom. All right, dear. Hopefully I haven't ruined your day too badly. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, 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 it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. It's Katrina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> I was just wondering, um, I know you have lots of money. Uh, I once, too, had an excess amount of money, and I'm spending it on people, like, uh, just for no reason. Do you do the same, or do you just hold off sales? I have helped people in need. In need. In need. Need. What about, like, a... Uh, presents or just taking someone out to dinner or do you give like money out to homeless or no i don't give money to homeless people i give money to people i personally know who are in need well so you've been in relationships before and you've spent money on them uh, and uh less them. and less over the years less over the years mm-hmm That's why I own so much real estate now. Yeah. So you don't ever have too much money or you don't ever just feel like being generous for no reason? Does it make you happy to give? Or Again, I, I give gifts to friends, gifts to my brother, his wife, my nephew. Oh. But I don't no lavish reason. I don't lavish money on women who have sex with me. Yeah. What if they like clean your house and mow your lawn? I, I I have I have a housekeeper and a gardener for that. Right. Well, can't blame you for that. It's a lot cheaper to pay professionals to do that stuff <laughs> than to you pay never, people you're having yeah. sex with. What? It's a lot cheaper to pay professionals to do that stuff than to pay people you're having sex with. And they probably do a better job. They do. <laughs> uh, for example, there are women who. Uh, Women who I've been involved with who've moved in with me and uh, they happen to get laid off their jobs. They just never happen to go back to work. Right. And so we had a conversation. I said, all right, well, we'll do it this way. If you don't want to go back to work, 
uh, you take care of the house and I'll take care of making the money. And they say, fine. And then a year later, you they're saying things like, we need to get a maid for this place. Yeah. It's just back to the ceiling. And so it's it's time you have to give them a good swift kick out the door. She didn't smoke pot all day, though, did she? No. Yes. You don't have to smoke pot all day. There's other forms of smoking pot all day, including okay. reading books all day, watching cable TV all day, or movies all day. Hmm. Uh, sitting around you. talking to your friends, going to Starbucks, doing your nails. There's a million other things that are just the same. So you have been in uh, committed relationships where you wanted to to take care of somebody. Not take care of them. Uh, okay. The idea would be they yeah. would do things in return. It would be quid pro quo. Yes, and that's probably why you still have the money you have today. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. By that's the way, amazing. when you have two beautiful homes and two beautiful locations, there's no shortage of beautiful women who want to be around you. It's amazing. So by not giving the money to women I had sex with already in the past... I've got this unbelievable well of hot chicks who want to be around me now. <laughs> they are younger and hotter than the ones of the past. So, have you ever been in love, though? I have, but unfortunately, it was too costly. Too costly. Yes. You know, it's like they say about cars: why buy when you can lease? <laughs> but don't you miss it? I mean, I'm in a relationship right now where I probably should get out just for my financial and health mental health but i just i feel like i uh i'd be missing out you know missing out on what the, the loser know. you're with the connection the connection with a loser he's not a loser he is a loser no just going through a hard time right now yeah well, you just said you have to get out for your financial well-being what does that mean exactly Oh, wait, what was the question? You said you have to get out for your financial well-being. What do you mean by that? You said it. What does it mean? Well, um, I moved out to L.A. Uh, uh, 2006 in November, and um, I moved in with uh, my boyfriend. He was an editor. He's a television editor. He was unemployed at the time. He was unemployed. What did you mean, on the Internet? Yes, I did. There we go. Yeah, well, I, I was... Um, I, was, I went through my promiscuous phase. I was a harlot. I, I wasn't ashamed. I, I didn't believe in love. I was, I was really like where you are now. I was against it. I, I didn't like people that were in relationships that they were idiots. Um, and I just didn't get it. So, uh, you know, I did my thing for years. I was, you know, use guys instead of using or them using me, vice versa. And uh, so I moved out here because he seemed interesting and different and. That, as far as you could tell over the internet. Well, when we met, that's when we we spent a weekend together, and he asked me to move in. After you the spent weekend. an entire weekend with him and decided to move in with him. That sounds very, very prudent. Well, it was it was. And you were living where? <laughs> where were you living? What? Where were I you? I was living in Sacramento with a deadbeat roommate who hadn't had a job for a year and I was paying her rent. Sounds like a pattern developing here. I know. <laughs> Well, it's, I just, I'm too generous, you know, and I'm really trusting, but, um... And, not, and then you think I'm greedy. No, I didn't think you're greedy. I just, like, all I hear on the radio, not all, but most of when you're talking to women, uh, you just, um... I don't know, it's it's like you kind of... Uh, Is being in love worth the cost? Tell me. <laughs> no, not, not being, uh, you know, on your ass up. And let me guess, your Almost. your boyfriend is uh, working intermittently, if at all. Freelancing, yes, yes. Freelancing, meaning unemployed, and that means you're paying the bills. <laughs> well, yeah, most of the time, but it's uh, most of the hard time. Hard to find work out here. Too. It's hard to find work when you have uh, no experience. Right, and, and let me guess, the college you went to is no college. Is that right? Um, me. You. Um, I graduated early and I was in uh, I was taking college courses when I was still in high school. You never went to a college, did you? Yeah, I went to several. I went to Sac State and Folsom Lake College. But I didn't So you never went to a real college, you went to community college. Well Sac State is a real college, but that was when I was um still thirteen, so I guess it's college. Did you ever get a college degree? 
Of course not. I had no idea what I wanted to be, and I hate. I can't sit in that for too long. So <laughs> you you yourself are not really gainfully employed. You're with no. someone else who's not gainfully employed. You I never bothered to get a college degree. <laughs> I was gainfully employed before I moved out here. But that's my right. point. You moved to Los Angeles uh, after being uh, with a guy who, 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 who laid pipe with you for a weekend, and then you decided it was true love, and so you quit a good job. And that you, wasn't good. So you quit a lousy job, uh, but it was a job, and you came to Los Angeles without worrying about whether you had a job or how you would pay for things. <laughs> well, it was pretty much taking for about a year until now we're having some trouble but mm. I, I I do want to go back to school but I know how to, I'm pretty much you know trained how to be a television editor I've taught myself how to use Avid and like a bunch of software and I've had several jobs but it's just really hard to get um, like a staff position so you know Kind of, um, well, you know, there's a lot more competition in Los Angeles than Sacramento. You would have been uh, best uh, advised to stay in Sacramento. Oh, I hate Sacramento. Sacramento. I, darling, I hated Stanton, Virginia, but I had to work there for a while. Wow. Well, I was working there for five years, and it wasn't going anywhere. I was working at a car wash. I had the job since I was 15. I thought you were working at, as an editor. Huh? I thought you said you had jobs as an editor. No, when I moved here, um... What were you doing for a living in Sacramento? I was a cashier at a car wash. Oh, you were a cashier at a car wash. Isn't that great? I was great? only 19. I was only 19. That's only 24 months ago. I know. I'm still young. I, By the way, it's not even 24 months ago because you came here in November of 2006. <laughs> That's 15 yeah. months ago. So you're all grown up now that uh, you've been here 15 whole months. Isn't that great? Yeah, I feel great. Can you find a job at a car wash? No, I haven't. You can't uh, even get a job at a car wash. I haven't applied for a job at So a car your wash. boyfriend, what, when he's home and he has nothing better to do, he teaches you how to edit a video? Is that what, what the two of you do together? No, I taught myself how to edit a long time ago. Mm. And and uh, I've had several jobs since then. I've learned a lot more. It's hard to get your foot in the door, that's all. Uh, it's going to happen. I'm positive it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. So is everybody who comes to L.A. They're all going to make it. They're all going to make it in showbiz. I don't want to make it. I just want to be happy. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to worry about bills. That's all I want. Uh-huh. I don't need two houses and, uh, you know... Be don't you realize person. it would be a lot easier to get a job editing video in Sacramento where there's less people doing it? I do. I do realize that. But it, uh, Sacramento, I just... I can't... Plus, you can live with your parents or other relatives or friends until you uh, have a, 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 a resume and you've got some experience under your belt. I do. I have several. No, now, having several jobs that you did for three days or two days or one day, <laughs> that is not a resume, dear. <laughs> a job is something that lasts for years, okay? Oh, oh, I know. I had my first job for five years. It's the only job I had. But you're 21 years old. You had your first one at the car wash? I know. But, but your, job, your first job was at the car wash, right? For five years, yeah, though. I, I had no other job. five whole years at the car wash. Do you put that on your resume? When you try to get a no. job editing video, five no, years at the Sacramento car wash. No, I don't. <laughs> Not unless they... Five ask. years at the Rancho Cordova car wash. <laughs> It's better than no job or working at Starbucks like all my other friends. Oh yeah. Uh, there I you go. <laughs> you could you you could go work at Starbucks with all the other video editors. Well, that's why I left. And actresses. It, was boring. it wasn't fulfilling, <laughs> and I need to take a risk. Well, and now you got nothing. Well, yeah. Well, not here right at the moment, but. Yeah, at the moment. Well, the moment is where we're living. Okay, we're not living in your pipe dreams of the future. We are living in the moment. In the moment, you don't have anything. I have a cell phone in a car. And oh, boy, and oh, boy. And, 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 and you have a... Te anyway. Darling, you have a tenuous hold on those. Trust me. The Tom Likas Show.